and welcome to the Redmen TV. It's Jonathan here with the fa the fan phone in show. I'm joined tonight by another Jonathan. We're blessed, and of course, the infamous Steve. Are, has anyone ever called you your 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 first name on its own? It's always been Steve Hoare. Have you? Do you ever? You still get Steve as well, do you? Um, no. It's usually Steve Hoare. It's fine. Yeah, the kind of rhymes in, doesn't it? it just because well, there's, there's plenty of there's plenty of Steves about, so <laughs> it, it differentiates me from the crowd. True, true, is, true. Is, is it Steve or Steven? I called you Steven on Twitter before. Steven or Steve. Not, never Steve. Never Steve. Okay. I remember that. Cool. Cool points to note. Well, it flows and it flows just like that Fab Four really, doesn't it? And, you know, we can get, we can talk about the match in detail, but we're only going to come ground to one thing. It's that front four. And like we all tweeted before the game, silly gifts. I know Steve, you had the kind of the wrestler with the eyebrows going crazy. I went for the more traditional, just old fashioned boner. Whatever takes your fancy. I, d I didn't see yours, Jonathan. I'm sure. I'm, but I'm sure you had something as well because it was the thing to do. But um, they they really were just amazing. And you know, as I said, there's no, there's nothing else we can we can start the show without talking about simply how good that front four is. They are ripping you arseholes for teams, and they will continue to do that. And it's an absolute joy to watch. And how blessed are we really to have them in our team at the moment? Steve, do you wanna do you wanna do you wanna give mm -hmm. you have a little bit of a, a ramble or you know j just kind of get it out of your system there? Yeah, it's 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 frightening how good they can be, John, isn't it? You know, mm. when they click and when when you give them space or when you you know if you dilly on the ball a little bit, ram your field, someone will take it off you, and then they, they break with with just frightening speed, and you know that's with twelve goals in, in 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 two games now and. And it could have been more. Seven actually flattered Moscow, and that's that's ridiculous to say. But you know, it could have been ten. It could have been well more because we had, you know, Sturridge misses a couple of very good chances. Salah misses a few before he finally gets his goal. And what what was interesting today is that we did it slightly differently. It, it was almost more like a four four two today. Mm -hmm. In that Salah was almost playing as a striker, and he was playing from predominantly from the left. Obviously, he's mainly played from the right all season. But obviously Klopp has, has found something in the Moscow team or he's seen something that he thinks would work. So Mane and, and Coutinho were almost playing as like orthodox wingers and with, with a front two of, of Firmino and Salah. But the the movement of them all, it, it must just be impossible to defend because one minute Mane's you know, popping up on the right wing and then he's centre forward, then he's over on the left. And they just interchange so well and they create space for each other. And it's... When we get the ball back and we count it and we're running at defenders, it's 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 almost unstoppable because some players are dragging other players out the way and they're so clever. And like I say, it's they're in space all the time. They're always they've always got a yard of space and it's just ridiculous. And listen, Moscow did not defend well at all. That is a caveat we must include. You know, I mean, they were they were dreadful, but Liverpool made them look worse. You know, I mean, this this is a team that beat Sevilla five one. It's a team that you know we, we only scored one goal against in, in the return leg, although we should have scored more. So they're, they're no mugs. They're not a great team by all by all accounts, but they're not they're not absolute garbage. And we've just we've just made them look like idiots. You know we've embarrassed them. Yeah, and um, t t for me, John, to just to bring you in here on on, on this, mm. one of the things that's most pleasing for me is that's a bunch of players that have been brought together. Like Salah only joined in the summer, Mali Manny the season before, Bobby and Coutinho had a bit more time together, but that. We have to call them a four now because that's the way they are. It's just an attacking unit of four players. But they've looked like they've played together for years together. As Steve said, there's so much natural movement. Um, it's such a fluid system. The players there, although like it's, it did start with Sally and Bobby up front and then Manny and Coutinho, they weren't really wingers. They were just kind of tucked in a bit on, mm. on, on, the, on the wings. But they, they can all play in each other's position. They can all interchange. And... That's one of the reasons why Sturridge doesn't doesn't get as much game time anymore because he, he isn't able to move and interchange as, as much as he can. But it's it's an it's a joy to watch and I think it's a testament to to Klopp's uh, coaching uh, and his coaching staff that they fit in together. And as I said, they look so comfortable and it's like they've played together for years, isn't it? It is, and I think that lets the nail on the head. Really, um, you've got to give him credit. I think um, the manager because he's managed to bring those lads together and get them, you know get them to play in a way where like you say you can play in any position and I don't think that's something really you know you can see around the league or necessarily something we've had before um, I know BT uh, at full time I do a bit of a comparison between them and um, Sturridge, Suarez and Sterling and I don't think necessarily they could do that really you know Sturridge was always the striker in that um, even though Suarez used to play up front with them um, but it's just spellbinding to watch you know it's like 
I like I like the fact that you know they're all hard workers, you know, as well. There's um I don't think as good as they are, you know, and everyone makes the thing about the pace of a uh, uh, Mane and Salah. I think people don't focus as much on the fact that they all actually graft as well. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think Coutinho sometimes in the past has been guilty of growing into games. You know, he's maybe have a quiet first 20 and then pick up as the game goes on. But in the last six months, he seems to have really found himself and just, you know, he goes at a full tilt. And I think the, the one thing you can never fault him for is his work rate, as I say. And to have the four of them together, it must just be an absolute nightmare for people because they don't really ever give you the let up and um, I think the analogy we were using on the show a few days ago is that you know if the left doesn't get you the right will and that yeah, that's really it, it you know just, 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 well. yeah and like how many times do we see uh, particularly in the fir- in the first half where we, we were pushing the game and we really were you know really going for that knockout blow because it was clear uh, you can maybe argue the Moreno injury, injury aside it was pretty much a perfect night we got the job done early we kind of were able to take the gas off the off the pedal a little bit in the second half with obviously the derbies at the weekend but how many times especially in that first half when we were going full throttle did you see those four players just pretty much running forwards almost like tripping over each other trying to get trying to get ahead of each other and like I think it was the the Bobby goal where uh, Manny gets the ball and you, even I'm watching it and you're like oh shit this isn't going to end well from for Moscow here is it like the, they're they're coming again and you know it almost got to a stage where you're, you you almost felt sorry for sorry for them in a way where it's just constant pressure, isn't it? It is, and I think that actually, um, in the first half, that was one of my favourite moments. Like, there's, there's a little, you know, two second burst where Mane just see, just sees that he can get the ball and just goes past the lad, um, and that makes it. You know, obviously, there's the, you know, he's fortunate uh, when it goes in the area and falls to Firmino you know, and stuff. But it's that, it's that little instinct just to get in there. I think I'm having that, and I want to do something with it. And um, I think it was the second half, like, but. You seen the same thing with Salah later on when you know he, he kind of like miscontrolled it in the area and then just you know did that quick turn and took a pass from on and it was like right I'm, I'm going in with this. Um, this is just a, a real like you know big killer instinct I think and um, the all if, if any one of them was in the team on their own and you know we had another bunch of lads up front you'd you'd pick them out as as you know as the lad who you know grafted and like you know a chase lost causes and stuff but to have four of them is just you know ridiculous and it's you know. It, it's it's difficult, I think, you know, as I say, for other teams to kind of mark against it because you don't really know, you know, we can go long, you know, Mane's kind of in the middle, you can go you can go long or, you know, we can play short, as can Salah, but obviously Salah's quite good at getting in behind. But then you've got Firmino and Coutinho in like the tight spaces, you know, playing it short and linking things up as well. So it must be absolutely like an absolute nightmare for people to try and play against. Yeah, and hopefully the the big fat Sam who's staying at home, probably stuffing himself in the in the local takeaway at the moment, with a view to the to the weekend, must be shitting himself um, watching that. Like he's just thinking, how deep can I park that bus? Yeah, and and I think John hit it right on the head there. In that, you know, you can park the bus and, and fair play to you because you you do not want to give Salah and Mane space in behind because we've seen too so many teams do that. But you know, we're we're more than capable of scoring against the park buses. So like you mentioned for me, you know, in you know, in deep in deeper areas. There was a move where Mane had the ball on the edge of the area and he plays in Salah and his shot is well saved. You know, that wasn't us getting in behind, that was us playing in front of Moscow, in front of a deep defence. So if if these four or even a couple of them are on their game, it's they are really, really difficult to stop. And I how would I defend? I think I think I would stay deep and just hope for the best and hope that, you know, your goalie has a worldy I'd really end up that your goalie has a worldy game and that, you know, your defensive midfielders can can do a job as well because if you give Liverpool space in behind, and that's what happened, Moscow had to chase that game. They had to win. So the second we score early on, and they've had to come out ten yards, you know, we were just taking the ball off them on the halfway line, and every time we took the ball off them, we scored. You know, Mane took it off them, Firmino took it off them, and we were in it all the time. So I think you've got to just hope. You've got to just hope that you, you know your goal has a good day, and that you, you park that bus and and see what comes of it. Because if you give us space in behind, or you give us room to run, and those diagonal runs that are, uh, we spoke about earlier. You, you, it's it's Harry Carry. You can't do it. You're gonna you're gonna lose. So, and that was the that was the key to this game is that that early penalty just completely threw Moscow out, out you know their game plan out the window because they would they would have said right we'll go we'll keep it tight we might try and nick something on a set piece we only need to win one nil you know these have got Clavan and Lovren playing centre half they were the best defender that was I imagine that's what their team talk would have been and four minutes in it's out, it's out the window and they've got to go and try and score twice against us and it's game over. The second that penalty goes in, that that was the game. They were never, ever, ever, they were never getting back into it. And 
that lad who fouled Manny, um, sorry, who fouled Salah, should, should be shot if I, he might get shot in Russia because <laughs> Stop that, 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 <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it, the ball, it was absolutely nothing, nothing happening. Matt, Salah was never going to score. But I remember a few years ago, like I say, when, when Luis Suarez was in the team, he made defenders do stupid things and he got in their heads because they were terrified of him. So I remember got a goal against Stoke when they just let the ball bounce because they didn't know what to do. And next minute Suarez is in and scores. And I think Salah might be having the same effect in that he's making defenders look really stupid because they panic whenever he's near the goal because they know how good he is. And it's like, oh, I've got to get close to him. I can't give him space. And then, and then you throw him on the floor. And, and fair play to the ref, that that was a penalty. And not, I don't think a lot of refs would give that that early in a game. But he, he was right to give it. And like I say, once that goes in, it was game over. They, they, they had nothing left. And it was it was four minutes into the game. Yeah, it was. It set the tone and whatever chance they had was done then. like Because uh, we just... The, the the crowd got up, the players got up and got up aggressive. And we just... The way this team is evolving... And I keep coming back to... It was, I spoke to in a lot of various shows and stuff. But I keep going back to that hor- horrible show at, at Wembley. And I think it was Andrew Beasley had a, had a stat out there again just after the game. It says, since that game, we've played nine nine matches. We've won seven, drew two, lost none. We scored 32 goals, conceded six. Uh, we've scored three plus goals in eight out of nine games. And there's five clean sheets in that. That you know that shows a team that's in red hot form. And our results are, are starting to prove it. And the exciting thing is there, there is, and particularly when, when you take, speak about that, it's almost twofold. It's like the attack attacking half and the and the and the defensive half but in terms of an attacking point of view like you have the likes of um chamberlain solanke storage etc are all players who are well capable of, of coming on and you know adding more to our system like we really really have options we're, we're com- almost getting to a situation now where we can play defenses any way they want or any way we want you to to now and you know what i loved in the first half there how at times when we didn't have the ball it very much was that four sitting deep and the the, the, the bank of four got very close to our back four to leave space up ahead um, to try and cover some of our weaknesses because they kept trying to go in behind Moreno, especially in the first half. They clearly saw the Sevilla game, and you know, but we didn't. We that allowed us then just to break, and you know, that's the most pleasing thing for me that that kind of continued evolution we spoke about at the start with the coaching, etc. And you know, we really are in, in in good shape at the moment. Um, Jonathan, do you want to yeah. do you want to ramble on a bit more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's you know, it's I think again. You, it's it's one of those things that you look at like it's weird then um, that we are in really good form, but I don't think we're seeing necessarily the team play you know the kind of football that we've seen them play in the last eighteen months or so on the club. You know it is obviously free scoring, you know we're scoring lots of goals and stuff, um, but it's not necessarily heavy metal. You know I think ever since really I think since thirteen fourteen we've been guilty of being the team who when when it when it works we can go out there and put four or five past anybody, but we'll concede three or four. Um, I'm starting to see, you know, a team that you know really is comfortable going into fourth gear, but maybe not the fifth, um, which you know you think would be a bad thing, but it isn't. I think they're being, you know, they're, they're making chances, but they're also taking the time to make chances and being patient. You know, um, if you look at the front four tonight, you know they're making chances for each other. I was actually really impressed. Sturridge came on and teed up the goal, you know, rather than you know just going for it himself. Um, and that's a different way, I think, for us. You know, um, I think a lot of people have spoke recently as well about the fact that the manager's rotated and that's something we haven't seen from him, you know, uh, the time he's been here before. Um, he's keeping people fresh. You know, I think the lads, whether that breeds confidence in the team, you know, whether they're looking at it and thinking, well, I will get a chance in the next game if it's not this one type thing. Um, but whatever, you know, how, how we set that team up, you know, obviously as an 11 is great, but the fact that he's got those options that can come in and the fact that that keeps everyone else fresh and it means that we can, you know, pull lads in and out as and when we need them. Um, is you know really you know it's really added a new complexion to how we are. I think, you know, I think quietly you know you wouldn't be getting it in terms of like you know overall contribution necessarily. But I think you've got to look at someone like Sally Milner coming in tonight. Hasn't really featured at fullback. Um, obviously you know with the Mourinho injury, but he comes in and you know doesn't really put a foot wrong and actually plays a big part. And you know at least two of the goals. Two assists really isn't it? The, the, the first mm-hmm. one especially for Manny was it's a beautiful across. Um, Manny takes it uh, takes it wonderfully. I, I love that goal. For, it was the breakaway move. The ball in was perfect, and I love the way Manny kind of corrects himself halfway through. It. He goes flying into it almost like a little scissors kick. He's going to smash it through the laces, and then he goes, "Oh no, I'm just going to side foot it." Um, I love that little correction, and it was probably my favorite goal of the night. I know it's it's a difficult question. Um, the the substitutes kind of they, they all have kind of 
they lead to more telling questions really for, for me so obviously it's it's the Moreno injury as Steve kind of said at the start it looks like that's potentially you know a, an injury that's going to keep him out of a couple of games um, I'd say he's a very very unlikely that he's going to play the derby now so d- does 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 um, Klopp go steady Yeti uh, and go with Millie in, in the derby or does he throw Robbo in um, yes. Uh, Klopp afterwards, to be fair, said that, that the medical team assessed Moreno and they didn't think it was as serious as it looked because it looked the replay. I watched, I watched the game at home and it looked a bad one. And then you know the guy, he looked like he was crying as he went off, which you know uh, is never a good sign the way he goes down and stuff. But Klopp did say they might have got lucky and that it might have just been one of those where it's jarred okay. and then it's it's kind of been an impacting. So who knows? But. Mm-hmm. I think he, I think he would pick Robertson for the derby if, if Moreno doesn't make it, just because Milner's trained as a midfielder and Klopp is massive on his training, isn't he? We know that. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of time before Sunday's game, so he could work with Milner at left back. You know, Wednesday through Wednesday through Saturday, he'd be really needed to. But you know, Robertson's the backup left back, so I presume he would go with him. But it was only, it was the only the only negative on it on a really good night. Really, was that injury because. It, it's one of those. It's, it's a bit like the Mane injury in the derby last year. It's one of those where it's an impact where you're trying to block, make a block and it just it just twists a little bit. And it, it, it was unfortunate because, you know, bar Sevilla, Moreno's been, had a really good season, hasn't he? In, in all, by all accounts, he's been one of our better players, to be fair to him. And I'll be honest, I had him packed off and gone in the summer. I didn't want to see him again, but he's come back in. He's played well. He's played pretty well. But it's, again, it... it, it that, that, that can happen. You're going to lose players through this Christmas period. We're going to lose probably three or four. So this is where you need your squad. And if you're going to lose them, I know this might sound a bit perverse, but that's how you want to do it. You don't want someone going off with a hamstring because they're overplayed. You don't want someone, you know, which was what happened to us last year, where you just kept playing the same team and the same lads. And it, and fatigue injuries, they, they, that's, that's what would cause, you know, injuries by fatigue, where impact injuries happen in football, don't you? You know what I mean? That, that's one of those things that... Klopp has managed. He's really managed the squad well over the last couple of weeks. I've been really impressed with what he's done. You know, everyone's got a game five or six changes. Um, what I would say is that I think what he's picked tonight is what maybe he sees as his strongest side. Um, maybe uh, obviously he'd want Mignolet in goal, and obviously if Matip's fit, he would play as well. But and obviously Klein's injured. But from what we what he's got, I think that might be what he prefers. And I know the captain isn't included. And I've always thought, you know, Klopp loves Jordan Henderson, but I've got a feeling that, that might this might be the team that he really, really fancies, you know, in, in absolute crucial games. Now, post-game, he did say Henderson's going to play at the weekend. He said he's 100% nailed on. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. But I do think that, personally for me, I think that was our, our best team. Um Bearing in mind, I'd say I'd have the goalie you know, and I'd have Matip, obviously, if fit. But that front, the way we, the, the front six w- was was constructed, I, I would very much like to see us go with that. It needs to be. So, whoever we get in the quarter final, in the last 16, rather, you know, there's some potentially really big games Real Madrid, Juventus, the, 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 you know, top, top sides by Munich. If we're going to go up against those, then that's the team that I would like us to play. I would like to see Emre Chan as the six. Um, with with that with the with the attacking in front of them, obviously the caveat is Embry picks up that yellow card and he will be suspended, mm-hmm. which is a which is a big deal actually. You know, it's, in that we do get obviously we're going to play the away leg first, so by Monday afternoon we could be tra- we could be know that we're travelling to the Bernabeu or to the Allianz um, without Embry Chan. So that again is a little bit of a negative, but again it it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, absolutely, and and the other just to to rush over the other kind of subs that kind of showed little pointers maybe towards the the weekend, or maybe I'm reading too much into it. The fact that he took Lovren off, uh, John as well, and you know it did the flip that we've all been crying out for. Put Gomez in centre half, Trent to right back, and then the other one just let you speak about both briefly. Is it's probably not going to be too much of an indication, but the fact that he he was so desperate for Salah to score that he left him up top, Sturridge come on and played on the right, um. Mm. What your views on those? They do, you know. I think they would do, do the right changes, and I think they were interesting changes. I think, um, I think Salah was going to play at the weekend, regardless, like whatever happened. Um, but I think when you look at the shift Firmino put in against Brighton and the shift he's put in against tonight, um, you want to keep him. I think he's more than anybody in a weird way, like he's he's key to how we play, leading that press from the front, and especially um, while Alana isn't still in the team. Um, so that made sense, and I think the Lovren change as well is is. 
I, th- I think it's one he'd like to leave. You know, it's probably a sub he didn't want to have to make, but you know, because of the injuries we've got at centre half at the minute, he, he wants, he needs him fit. I think he knows that Clavin's okay, but he, he seems to only be okay in like spells. You know, he can do three or four games as kind of like you know, um, a bandage, but he can't really do anything beyond that. And I think he's slightly worried that you know, having just having him as the senior centre half in the squad, you know, is a situation he doesn't want to be in, given the form the rest of the team's in at the minute. But um, I think John, I think. John, I think I'm right in saying Lovren's been taking painkillers to play. I don't think he's fit at all. I think if Matip was about, he wouldn't. We wouldn't be seeing much of Lovren mm-hmm. at the minute. He's actually injured. He's not in a good way. But he and he's taking medication to get through games. He hasn't really been training much. So you know, credit to him for getting himself on the pitch. But so so then it, it does make sense. You know, you you get him off because you know he missed the last game, didn't he, with injury? He wasn't available. At, sorry, at Brighton. Um, sorry, Clavan missed the last game. At Brighton, so he's he's relatively fresher than, than Lovren. So Lovren had to play Brighton injured, and he come into this game injured. So as soon as that, you know, as soon as the the game was safe, I think they were they were spot on to get him off the field because if Liverpool do lose him at the moment, then you are looking at obviously Gomez is probably going to play centre half, and that means a lot of Trent. And you know, Trent's a young lad still. You don't, you you can't risk having him playing six seven games on the spin. It just isn't going to work. It's not feasible. So. We are. We we know within that position we should assign someone, and we didn't. So, I think that was more a case of like really trying to protect Asia from from an injury that would, you know, be really really devastating at this time of the season. Cool. Well, I think we'll come close to wrapping it up. Usually we would say man of the match, but that's not even. I'm not even going to insult you uh, by, by by asking you guys that. Um, I'll change the question slightly. I picked Manny's second our first goal. Sorry, the one with the, the bicycle uh, sort of scissors. The way he kind of just corrects himself and, and smashes it home. It was just the ball, the movement. That that's my favorite goal of the night. It's a, it, we we're spoiled with choice. The seven of them there, seven very good goals. Um, Steve, what's your 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 favorite of the of the seven? Uh, the second Coutinho goal, uh, where he doesn't even look at the ball and just strokes it into the corner. You know that was just that's a Liverpool goal. If you ask anyone, what there's, there's, I think there's two types of Liverpool goal at the moment. There's the there's the Manny goal at West Ham when we score off their corner with absolute blister and pace, mm-hmm. and then there's that goal where it's the one touch movement and which with defenders don't know where they're going, and it's such a cool finish by Coutinho. You know he's 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 in great form at the moment, and long may he continue. Obviously, because again, I, I agree with John. Sometimes he 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 flatters to deceive at times. Coutinho, he, he can, he isn't like a, what Sal has been this year, or he's not been like what Suarez was in the past, where the talent was there and it was always it was always on display. Coutinho very much has his, his peaks and drops, but at the minute he's on a peak and it's it's a pretty good peak. So hopefully going into Sunday it stays there. But I thought that goal was was a quintessential Jurgen Klopp Liverpool goal. So I'll pick that one. Cool, cool. And you, John? Yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed the second goal. I thought that was good. Um, obviously, you know, great passing move, but I think I'd go for the third, um, which was Firmino's. I just think using, you know, the, the kind of quick move from Mane to, you know, and the the um, the balls, you know, to kind of, you know, take take that risk to turn, cut in and get the ball. Um, but I also just think, I think Firmino in the last few weeks has really come into his own, uh, playing up front. I know I think, you know, a lot of people discuss the kind of thing of you know, like you know, does 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 he score enough? You know, in spite of everything else that he gives to the team. But I think it's, you know, it's situations like that where you know he's in the air, you're in a tight space, and he just puts it away. You know, with with a simple touch that you realise that that's why he's there. You know, he's that he's a good footballer, and you need a good footballer in that circumstance to finish, not someone who's going to take a touch. So I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, and I think it's I think the way he's developing, we won't get start, started again. This, it's another day's discussion, but the way he's finishing those goals naturally without even thinking about it now shows he's evolving into a, the perfect number nine, I think, for us. But listen, folks, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks to Steve and John for joining us. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the Red Men TV. And don't forget, folks, this is your opportunity to come on after games and have your points. So, so if you want to come on board with us and, and, and hear us ramble or get your point across, just subscribe to me our, on, on Twitter, Jay Higgins Tree, or just subscribe to the Red Men TV. Leave a comment, say you want to come on the show, and we'll get back in touch with you. We'll talk to you all soon, folks, and up the Reds.